But I wanted to share this scripture in Mark 16, 17 through 18. And this is in, in response to those who are struggling with um, whether or not our jobs are going to force us to take the vaccine. He said, they shall take up a serpent and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. We need to remember that we have the power of God in us. I'm not, I'm not endorsing us running out to take this vaccine, but I don't want us to walk in fear. That is not God's way for us to walk in fear. If we're forced to do certain things, know that God is with you. Know that God will protect you. Amen. Amen. Walk out and be ignorant. We're not going to walk out and, and just do things just because, but we are going to trust in God and let his anointing lead you. But know that if you are a doctor or a nurse or, or whatever, and they start military. saying you have military and they're saying you have to take this vaccine or you can't continue. Know that God will protect you. Amen. 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 And I, and I, I just to piggyback, we're actually endorsing just the opposite. As you know, S4C, we're not in favor of these vaccines. Amen. We believe that it's a bunch of garbage. Yeah. So we are praying and we know that God, through the power of prayer, and Pastor Ben have already prayed over this, that God will make a way for his saints. Amen. 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 But we are not going to, uh, we are not about to live in the spirit of fear. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that just is a good segment because we're about to roll into a 21 day fast. And it is so important as a body. We have a, a focus for the fast, but it's so important as a body that we begin to think about and prepare for this fast. We are spelling out the word fast before we un, un, um, unveil the focus of this year's fast. So we're on the first two letters. We fresh and affection. Fresh, remember, you want a fresh take. When you, when you begin your fast, you don't want to be confused about whatever's going on, any distractions in your home because you haven't taken care of it yet. Go ahead and take the time now. Clean out your garage. Do that pile of laundry. Do those things. Obviously, you'll still have to clean during the fast, but you don't want to be distracted with extras. Right. Amen. Right. Those things that have been on your mind to do and to take care of, go ahead and start working on that now. Hey Amen. Let's really get our hearts. I love it because um, uh, Tahira looks at it as a as a a guest is coming. This is a honeymoon period. This is time. This is special time with our Lord. Hey Amen. Let's treat it as such. Yeah. Amen. Affection. Affection. Same thing. We're gonna start. I want you all, everybody in the room, and those that are abroad that's committing to this fast. Find yourself one or two accountability sisters or brothers. Because somebody needs to hold you accountable for doing what you said you were going to do. Amen. Whatever that fast looks like for you, I need you to be on. That's affection. That's showing I care about this. This is a time to romance with the Lord. Amen. I'm already, I'm on a new medication. I'm believing in the Lord. I don't know how it's going to affect my body when I begin to fast on this level. I'm investigating it now. Yeah. We have three weeks before the fast. So when that February 1st hit, I'm ready. Yeah. I am ready. I'm going to fast in some capacity. So prepare yourself, repair, prepare your mind and be ready to go. Amen. 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 And just remember, prepare your pantry. Yes. Amen. Get all those things out. There will be temptations. Get them out of your house now. Please don't try to eat them now. No. Don't try because all it's going to do is just open your appetite. So when the fast comes, it's going to be harder. Mm -hmm. So let's start even making changes, you know, minor changes in our in the way we eat, so that we can prepare ourselves for the fast. Amen. Yeah. If you have not signed up, you have until the twenty second before our first flyer goes out. Go online and sign up for the fast. That's in house as well. You have to sign up because we're not going to be sending out a million different communications. It will be one communication a week. Go online. If you have not received the um, new newsletter, you can send an email to Nicole underscore Davis number nine at yahoo.com and I will send you the information to sign up. But you have until January 22nd to get signed up. Amen. 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 So please recognize the fast has not started yet. You haven't missed anything. Okay, this is just our unreal, uh, um, unveiling period. <laughs> My words, Amen. hallelujah. But we want to make sure that our minds and our heart, the more we prepare, the better successful this fast will be, right? Yeah. We are more prepared so we can do better. We know better, so we're going to do better. Amen. 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 Praise God. The I email address again. Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E, underscore Davis, the number nine, at yahoo.com. Asia will also put it in the chat. You can, t you can email me there. 
Amen. And then just so we're not um, forgetting those wonderful things that Pastor um, acknowledged during prayer that is still free to you, assuming you send us your address, <laughs> that, that you, you can still get a Bible, a Talit, anointed oil, uh, a one-on-one -on -one Bible study so that you can understand what you're committing to if you're a new babe in Christ. All these materials are free to you, but we need your address. Make you send your name and your address address and that's um i don't remember that F email <laughs> that one is easier it's s4c bible 101 at gmail.com amen. amen 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 you can find a lot of those on the website amen amen, amen. and we got a bunch more stuff so tune in on wednesday pastor is going to do the rest of the announcements so that we can get ready for the word of god amen i'm going to ask the um congregation to please stand as i pray for pastor sandy Amen. Don't worry, Pastor. That was only six minutes. We can we can borrow six minutes. We can borrow oh, six minutes. Amen. Right. Good. All Please. right, we did that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our Father, name us in Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you for the prayer service that went forth, dear Lord. I pray that it encouraged hearts, dear Jesus, those that are struggling with many things, dear Lord. I pray that they were encouraged on today through the power of prayer. And they are learning to depend on your spirit and not their own, dear Lord, for strength and endurance through these times, dear Jesus. Praying over healing bodies, dear Lord. We thank you and we bless you. Lord, we pray over Pastor Sandy today, dear Jesus. We thank you for the word of God that's about to come forth, dear Dear Lord, we pray that all those that are listening, dear Lord, and those that came today are ready to receive. Their hearts are open to hear you spiritually, dear Lord. Allow it to manifest in them, dear Jesus. Uh, uh, attitude of study, dear Lord. An attitude of praise, dear Jesus. And as you minister to and through Pastor Sandy, dear Lord, those words came. Those words come with the same boldness that that he had in studying, dear Lord. The way the Holy Spirit spoke to him in his private time, dear Jesus, that he's allowed to share it with us with that same conviction, dear Lord. I thank you, dear Lord, as we receive and sup together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. My little beautiful wife. Hallelujah. She's, so, she's so awesome. She's so awesome. <laughs> I'm going to sing a song Do about you. Need you. Fan on today? Huh? I'm going to turn it on, yeah. <clears throat> It is hotter today, huh? That's a beautiful thing. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Pastor. Shalom, everybody. Elohim Tov. Cole Hasman. Hallelujah. God is good all the time Amen. in Hebrew. Kozman. Um, I uh, I'm just thankful for that for everybody that's here today. Thank you so much. What's his name behind you? The, yeah. Guillermo. Welcome, brother. God bless you. Oh yeah, praise God. Praise God. All right, and we got what? It's one. Yes. Yeah, we got one in a Raiders hat, so everything's better. <laughs> so, Shalom from Hawaii. Pastor. Shalom, Hawaii. Is that my our family? The Hawaii. Family. Really? Wow. Maybe, maybe we can move this whole thing to Hawaii. Dude, <laughs> that would be. Okay. Um, let me put my glasses on. I have them right here because I want to make a statement that the Lord gave me. When I asked him, what do you want me to pray about? I mean, to uh, speak about this morning. Yeah. And he said, write this down. <laughs> I did not come to save people from tribulation, but sinners from hell. So, and, and then the Lord continues speaking to me and saying that if you ask anybody in hell, um, would you like to leave hell for seven years and go on the earth and go through tribulation? They would all volunteer with joy and happiness. You understand? Yeah. Because 
Jesus came to save you from the torment of hell. He did not come to save us from the tribulation. The tribulation is something people go through because they're living in a specific time period and they were either lukewarm, they didn't believe in Christ, something of, of this nature, and then they were left behind to go through the tribulation. But in the tribulation, those people can still refuse to take the mark. Yeah. They can confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They can die in they can die confessing Jesus Christ and still end up in heaven. And even if you are there during the tribulation, because um, uh, the Lord showed me something funny, it's like uh, the first question they would ask is once I can I get something to drink? Mm -hmm. And they'll probably say, yeah, you can get something to drink. This you know, there's water up there. And everyone in hell would raise their hand and go, let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll do tribulation. I'll, I'll do I'll do 10 years, right. you know. Because you guys don't understand what God is really trying to save you from. And it has to be emphasized that tribulation is a small portion of what God is saving people from. OK, that is something that he doesn't want his church to go through. OK, but hell is something he doesn't want anybody to go through. You understand? Amen. So. I want you guys to understand that because we live in a world that God allows us to have free will, okay? And f free will is very dangerous yeah. because you can really do whatever you want, you know? Um, all of us have the spirit of God living in us that are born again, and that spirit tells us when we're doing something wrong. Paris apologized to me for something and I didn't even hear him say hear him say it because I sneezed on his back. I think he called me a weirdo. <laughs> but uh, later he apologized. He said, I'm sorry I called you that. And I didn't even hear him call me that. So it didn't bother me. But it was amazing that the Holy Spirit hit him and said, right. And that's proof that the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. If you can, if you be a pastor and curse your wife out. Something's wrong with your spirit. Yeah. That means that you, you've either desensitized yourself from hearing from God. Mm -hmm. Something has gone wrong. OK, Amen. so when you're going to do something wrong, you can be sitting there and watching something and the Holy Spirit will go turn that off. Yeah. The one girl said she, she accepted Christ and God delivered her from uh, uh, what's that? TV show about why, desperate, why, desperate, desperate wives, housewives. desperate housewives. She said the, the Lord delivered her from desperate housewives. Amen. Said the Holy Spirit told her, don't watch that anymore. It's ruining everything, all everything, the way you talk, the way you think. So he, she said God had to deliver. But it was the Holy Spirit while she's sitting there watching it saying, I don't want you watching this no more. Wow. And so the Holy Spirit is very active in our lives. He's going to tell you what not to do, what you should do. Mm -hmm. And for you to not listen to him is saying, you know, I'm, I'm uh, what they call quenching the spirit. I'm at ba basically fire on you. I, I, I mean water on your fire because I don't want to hear what you're saying. Right. Okay. So we all have the ability. But remember this. God is here to save us from hell. Okay? Amen. Somebody um, who used to live in heaven is headed there. And he knows he's headed there. Yep. Okay? And he knows by now he should really know because God has shown him that everything I say happens. You tried to stop Israel from coming? Couldn't, happen. Couldn't do it, right? You tried to uh, 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 stop Jesus from going to the cross? Couldn't happen. So all of these things that God prophesied that would happen have happened. And so you can, you can very much see that God is in control. Yeah. Okay? God is in control. And everything he's spoken of is going to happen. Is tribulation going to happen? Yes, yes and very soon. Okay? Will two be in one place, one taken and the other one left? Yep. Yes, and very soon. Will the world be under a one world system where Satan will rule? Yes, very. it's going to happen. OK, you're watching it happen right now. Yeah. So all of these things are going to happen. I'm going to if you have your Bible today, 
I want you to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. And I'm going to be reading from my New King James Version because um, even my NIV, even though it's not a, you know, Lucius, Lucius uh, Printing Company did the first NIV. You know, Lucius, Tr Lucius. Lucius Printing Company did the first NIV. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. Lucius stands for what? Lucifer. Right. It was a Lucius Trust Company, Lucius right. uh, Publishing Company. And so they decided they were going to do a Bible. So that Bible became the NIV. Then other people came along. Now, this NIV right here is from a guy named Tinsdale, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, Tinsdale. And this NIV right here corrects a lot of what Lucius uh, Publishing did as far as taking scriptures out and doing things like that. But this Bible also has flaws. This um, King James Version, if you study from the Hebrew, you'll find that the King James Version also has flaws. OK, so I found that the only thing that I could do is study from Hebrew and then compare the Hebrew to the English. And I'll know which one got it right. OK, and thank God for being able to learn Hebrew. So in Revelation, I mean, in uh, Isaiah chapter 14. And um, we're going to um, start reading. There's a song that says, hear the words of the wise men say, Thank you, Pastor Sam. Babylon is going down. And that song is telling you that Babylon is the last world system that's going to exist in the world. Isaiah 14 is a chapter about the final destruction of Babylon. Not the old Babylon, the new Babylon that's going to be is considered the one world power that's coming into the world right now. So I'm going to start reading at verse three. It says it shall come to pass in in the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow, from your fear and hard bondage in which you were to serve that that uh, you will take uh, this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, now he's not talking about old Babylon. He's talking about the last existing Babylon, the one world order. OK. And he says how the oppressor has ceased. The golden, it says the golden city has ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. He's talking about when he comes back and throws Satan into hell. We'll see more as we go along. The scepter of the ruler, he who struck the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he who ruled the nations in anger and persecuted and no one hindered, <coughs> the whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. So um, before I go on to verse eight, when Satan is when Christ comes back and he binds Satan's up, Satan up and he throws him into hell. Right. Mm -hmm. It says the whole world is going to break out in singing because Christ will be back and there's no one to torture us or torment the nation. No one forcing anybody to take a, a, a vaccine. Nobody forcing anybody to wear a mask. OK, nobody kidnapping other people's kids. No one selling you drugs. No one cheating you, you know, out of finances and all this stuff that he's God says all of that is going to when Jesus comes back to the earth. I'm not talking about tribulation. I mean, at the end of the tribulation, when he comes back. All evil is going to cease because Christ will then reign and rule from Jerusalem and he will reign over the whole earth and he will build the temple. Now, it says, uh, indeed, cypress trees rejoice over and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you were cut down, no woodsman has come against us. Now, the, from the understanding that when Christ says the fig tree, 
But there was not just a fig tree. There were many trees and all the trees of the earth, which God considers the human race. She so says, he says, when when Christ returns, no one is no woodsman is going to cut you down anymore. So all of that evil is going to be done away. It says hell from beneath is excited to see you, to meet you at your coming. Mm. So it says when when Satan, when God throws Satan into hell, everyone in hell is going to be excited to see him and to, to see him enter the place that they were cast into. It says hell from beneath is excited to meet you at your coming is steered up the dead for you the ch the chief one of the earth it has raised up from the throne and all the kings of the nations they all shall speak and say to you have you come also have you also become as weak as we have you become like us <laughs> He says, your pomp, which means your, your arrogance and pride, has been brought down to Shoel, which is hell. And it says, and the sound of your, your, your string instrument, it says, not only have you been brought down to hell, but the sound of your string instruments. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you're not going to make music for the world anymore. Because most people that are secular, they listen to Satan's music all day. And you don't even know it. They're Billy, what is his name? What's the, look, the girl that sings now? That's a complete Satan worship. Billy Iris? I, Miley Cyrus. Miley, no, Miley Cyrus is gone. She's Billy Eilish. She's satanic as possible. But a lot of, just to get a record deal right now, you have to kind of buy into this satanic worship, right? Who, who do you think is making sure that the music is orchestrated to the way that it can actually enter into your atmosphere? Satan. Satan. So they, the people that are producers have to be, they ask the guy, do you, I, I hear you, no, he says, uh, I hear you have to be a, a, a um, confirmed witch now to be over a record label. The, the one guy that... Uh, that was part of the 13 families. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I, t I asked the guy, he said, I told him, he said, uh, I hear you have to be a confirmed witch now to be over a record label. And he says, yes, yeah, true. And he says, do they still take the music into the room to, to, to pray over it, to, uh, to make sure that the demons enter it, so whoever listens to it and buys it, that the music goes? And he says, yep, they're still doing that. And uh, I had that interview. Um, but you have to understand something. Satan has been making music for a long time made music in heaven which means he was the one that came in the morning to make the praise and worship for the for, for the angels and in the praise and worship God would descend the praise and worship because he inhabits what praise. our praises okay so you want God in your atmosphere praise him put your music on and praise him and he says and then God will descend into your atmosphere. So Satan has been making music for a long time. So if you play satanic music in your house all day, expect the same spirit that you're playing to be in your house. You understand? Be careful what you're playing. Rock music, all this stuff like that. I told one mother that was going to our church I went to pick her up in the van that morning. We had a van back then. I went to pick her up in the van. And when I got to the house, everybody was playing Snoop Dogg, cursing. It was just, it was horrible. I was like, I'm pulling up the van like Jesus, everything on the van. They didn't even turn the music down. So I waited there and then I said, man, you guys shouldn't play that music because it draws demons. Ah, oh, okay. All right. All right. You want to turn it down? I was like, no, I'm going to leave. I left came back. I come back, there's police all over the place. It's like, what happened? Oh, some guys from a gang came over here and shot up some people, and her son had got shot, who, who I brought to church, had got shot that day too. Right? Now, he survived it, but there was another kid that didn't survive it. But you can't expect to invite Satan to an atmosphere right. and then expect when he showed up to be a nice guy. You understand? So be careful 
the type of music that you listen to. Kanye West did not make a Christian album. No, he didn't. Uh, demons don't make Christian albums, and demons don't care about words. So don't be like, oh, yeah, but they're saying Jesus. Nah, it's the music that controls the spirit, okay? So don't let a demon sing you a Christian song. Amen. Because the music he's singing, he's, he's doing, is for another reason. You understand? All right, I'm educating now. Praise God. Let me continue. It says, um, your pride has been brought down to hell and the sound of your string instruments. The maggots, some Bibles will say the worms, the maggots is spread out under you. The worms cover you. You hear that? How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How um, you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. So Satan is, well, he's in heaven telling everybody, I'm going to ascend up to the, to the heights. And he says, I will exalt my throne above the star of God. You hear that? I <laughs> got all these. I will. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. He said, I'm going to I'm going to reign over God's people. And he says on the on the furthest side of the north, which means he says, I will ascend to the heights of the clouds. That word is Obama. So he's saying, I'm going to raise above the Obama. The Obama is the Bema seat where God is seated. So Satan was saying, I'm going, to, I'm going to sit in the throne where God is. Okay? And then Jesus comes and says, I saw Barak. I saw lightning fall from where? From Obama. So Jesus says, I saw Barack Obama fall into the earth right so then he comes he has this name that's in hebrew that says he's the lightning that fell from the heavenly places and why would he change his name to be that hmm. but since we're not watching black people is like he's like another martin luther king <laughs> no he's not well put a picture of him and martin luther king on that side and obama on that side and you think you're doing something really nice right and it's, it's ignorance because you don't know the man's a Satanist. Right. And so we have to understand when he came, he came with satanic intentions. Yeah. And he's trying to come back, but I heard from one of the generals, yeah. Pastor Ben. Yeah. I heard from them. They said, now this is his word. If Biden gets inaugurated into, into office and becomes president, he says he will shut up and never say another word. What? He says, if that happens, he says, if it doesn't, he told the guy, you're going to have you're going to have me as a regular on your show and pay me two hundred thousand a year. The guy said, I agree, because I don't think you got enough time to do what you're saying you're going to do. He said, we've been setting this up for years. What? So wait on that. <laughs> that was he, he, he had been quiet since the since the since the night of the election. But now um, one of the generals did speak up. <coughs> so we'll see what happens there. I told you about it and I'll say we'll see what happens because he put his word on that. Wow. Okay, so as we're reading this, it says those who see you when you get to hell, he says those who see you will gaze at you and consider a uh, saying is this the one or is this the man who made the earth tremble? When they see Satan, they're going to go, is this him? Is this the guy that was so, that was tearing the nations apart, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness, who destroyed its cities, who did not open the house uh, of the prisoners? All the kings of the nation, all of them, um, uh, sleep in glory. Everyone is in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain. Thus, though uh, through you, through um, uh, with a uh, thrust through with a sword. Who it says who goes down into the stone of 
pit like a corpse trodden under feet. You will not be joined with them in burial. So he's like, you're not even going to the regular hell. He says, because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. And it says the brood of the evildoers shall shall never uh, be named. I'm a, I'll explain that. Um, the evildoers is the, the brood of the Nephilim will never be named. It says prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of the fathers. At least they rise up and, po and, and possess the land and fill the face of the whole world with cities. You hear that? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to end there. Let's see. For I will rise up against them, says the Lord, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant and the offspring of prosperity and say, uh, says the Lord. So God is saying he's coming. He's getting rid of every Nephilim out of the earth. Do you understand that? Yeah. Because I know most of us don't believe there's any here. But he says, lest they rise up and build cities and, and, and fortify themselves once again as they did before when God had to destroy them. Understand? Yeah. So Satan knows that he's going to hell. Satan knows that his torment is going to be different from anyone else's because he says, you will lie in a bed of, in a bed of maggots and, and the dead, the slain, will lie on top of you. And he's saying you will feel the burn of torment forever. This is what God has for Satan for all he has done to society over the last 6,000 years. Okay? God created it for him. Remember, God creates free will beings. What was Satan's problem? Arrogance. He, he had a free will. He could have obeyed. But he said, I found that he had this arrogance with him and this lying tongue in him. And he began to say, I will do this and I will do that. And look, in, and because he thought that when he sang in the morning, the angels were praising him. If I get up here and sing a song about Jesus, are you praising me? No. You don't care less about who's singing the song, right? right? We care about God. Satan sitting up there bowing like... <laughs> As, as if the angels and everybody's there to hear him sing. No, you got it twisted. Nobody was here for you. And now you're saying you're going to make yourself to be God and rise and, and, be, and sit in the Obama seat? No, it's going to happen. So he's going to catch. But he's speaking of it as it's already happened. Yeah. So Satan knows his day is coming. Yeah. That's why the tribulation, he says, he knows that his time is short. Seven years is a short time to do all the things that he wants to do to destroy God's people. Okay. Amen. I want us to go to the book of Mark. The gospel of Mark. Chapter 9. You in Mark chapter 9? All right. We're going to be in verse 42. Okay, and here's what it says. But whosoever causes one of these little ones who believe to stumble, it would be better for him... If a, if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. You hear that? Mm -hmm. So if you place a stumbling block in front of your brother, it causes him to fall from his faith. God says it'd be better if you just tie a rock to your neck and throw yourself in the water. Because placing a stumbling block in front of someone else is a serious crime to God. Because this person is trying to get to the kingdom. He's trying to, he's fighting. He's fighting the good fight of faith. And then you come and tell him, or he comes and tells you what? Um, I've fallen into sin. I've been doing drugs lately. I've been smoking weed. And he says, well, 
don't worry about it. You already got saved and you'll never lose your salvation. Just continue what you're doing. So he dies and he ends up in hell because he never obeyed God, though he said a beautiful prayer when he was 15. But now he's living in sin, right? And you tell him, well, it's okay. God still loves you and you're going to be fine. God still loves you and he's going to have the Holy Spirit try to speak to you to get you to change. And he will and the Holy Spirit will try to get you to come back. It's hard to lose your salvation. I tried. <laughs> I did. I did everything. I got to say, when I was 17, I did everything possible to not go to heaven. And God was always warning me. This is not right. Don't do this. You know her. Get away. You know what I mean? All kinds of stuff. But God, the Holy Spirit was always trying to draw me back to him until he succeeded because God doesn't give up on you because it took him too much to get you. And he paid too big of a price to get you. That's not silver and gold. That's blood that's paid for your salvation. And he's like, I paid too big of a price to just let you go. So he's going to have the Holy Spirit try to he's going to send people to you. That say, hey, this isn't the right way to go. Why don't you come back to God? You know, he's going to always do things because if something is valuable, you don't just let it go. You try to you try to preserve it. You, you're going to do something. And so the Holy Spirit is always calling us back. But if you're persistent in sin and then you got somebody else who's placing a stumbling block saying, oh, don't worry. You know, you know, you can't lose your salvation. I smoke weed, too. Mm. What did he just do? He placed a stumbling block in front of you. So he's got to pay for that. You understand? Our job is to tell people the truth. A lady wrote me a long letter. Wow, it must have been. You know, you get one of those emails that you read down, you, you scroll down and see how long it is. If you have to do like this. <laughs> if you do that five times, you're like, that's a book. I'm like, you sent me a book. Right. I'm sitting here trying to read this thing and it's all of this talking about what a wonderful pastor you are. And we, I'm just learning so much. And Pastor Ben, oh, the way he prays. But I just want to warn you guys that uh, uh, when a person gets safe, it's impossible for them to lose their salvation because, you know, God still loves them. And, and you're just making them feel guilty about the sin that they're in. But God is the only one that can bring them out of their sin. They can't stop on their own. So therefore, they can't lose their salvation. So I just want you guys to not make people feel guilty that are in sin because it'll just make them feel bad. I got freed, she said, when I found out. Mm that I couldn't lose my salvation. Wow. So now I don't really want to read the rest, but now I'm, you know, I'm like Jesus mad. <laughs> and I start typing, I do not agree with you 100%. Okay? Jesus says he hates this doctrine. He says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So there's no yeah, I'm a pastor, but I got three girlfriends in the church, but I'm saved and sanctified. Yep. First of all, Drea would kill me. <laughs> before God got to me, before God got to me, she'd be like, is he asleep? Is he asleep? And so I know. Okay, so don't think you can live in sin with God and say, well, I got saved five years ago and, and it's good, it's I'm already my name's already written. No, he said, I will not erase your name from the book of life. Right. If you can be erased from the book of life, what do you mean? What do you think? The people are asking God. He's there asking God, don't erase my name from the book of life. That means if it's in there, it God like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm done. I, we've done everything to try to get this person and I'm done. OK, yep. so understand that God is persistent in his love for you but even the most loving woman in the world can say i'm done yeah you understand and it for, for some women man they will they will love their man mm -hmm. he's like well he cheated but i still love him i think he cheated again but i still love him <laughs> he, he hit me 
he got to go, right? Yeah. Or something, but I find, but God is persistent in loving you, but everybody has a point where yeah. it's like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. God told me, you start selling cocaine with this guy, because he said, we got, you got the money, I could buy the key. We could. The Lord said, if you do this, I'm taking my hands off you. I heard the Lord, Lord's voice say me, said that to me that night. And I woke up and said, I'm done with crime, dude. I, I, I heard the Lord's voice, voice last night, and I'm done with you. I ain't going nowhere with you no more. I'm done. Because God spoke to me and told me that. And then the Holy Spirit just was warning me. So God is always going to be warning you. Why was God warning me? What is he trying to save me from? Tribulation? That was 1992. Hell. He was trying to save me from hell. Yep. Okay. Amen. So you, you, you're still here in uh, Mark ch chapter, we started in chapter 42. Okay. And it says, um, but whosoever causes a little one to believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to, to uh, if a, mount, a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maim rather than having two hands to go into hell um, into the fire that shall never be quenched where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So remember God told Satan the worm going to crawl over you. He's saying now to believers he said, if you cause a stumbling block, he says, now, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. That does not mean cut off your hand. <laughs> it means the activity that you're allowing in your life, cut it off. Right. Shut it down. Get rid of it. It is better for you to get rid of it and enter into heaven than you to go into hell with lust. Yeah. You understand? So what is causing you problems, God says, cut it off. All right? And he's going to give you opportunity to cut it off. And, as, and if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame rather than having two feet and be cast into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched where the worm die and the fire is not quenched so there is some torment going on there you understand he's talking about the same hell that Satan is going to maybe at a, not as a deeper level I don't know but I don't want worms calling on me and be burning anyway right so and and then now you're talking about a eternal existence I, was, I remember I was listening to a scientist. He says it's impossible for, for a, a human being to really actually die. I was like, nah, people die all the time. Then he started explaining to me how we are made, not the flesh, but out of energy and I forget what else. But he says you can't kill that. You can only take it and, and put it somewhere else. You can only transfer it. So, you know, you can't really die. You can only be transferred and to move to somewhere else. And God knew this when he made us. So you know what he did? He said, since they can't die, they can't all come here. <laughs> so God said, I got to make another place. What's the other place he made? Hell. So he said, now, he originally made hell for demons because uh, um, for, for, for fallen angels and demons because um, uh, of what was going on at the time uh, before the flood. So in the book of Enoch, it shows God creating hell. And so God created this place for people to go if they don't want God. Yeah. Okay? Amen. Good word. Then it goes again, it says, if you, but this is the part I want. It says um, in verse 9, for everyone will be seasoned um, will be seasoned uh, with fire it, th this is not oh yeah, okay well everyone will be seasoned with fire and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt he's talking about from an old testament 
meaning that every sacrifice had to be mingled with salt because, you know, you're making this offering to God. And it's just like if you were doing something, you'd like, hey, man, somebody put some, what, anybody put no lorries? Anybody got no lorries? <laughs> so God was like, every, every, uh, every sacrifice had to be seized with salt. You could not sacrifice to God and not put salt on the, on the, on the sacrifice. Did you guys know that? That's crazy, huh? So God commanded that every sacrifice be seasoned with salt. And now he's saying the same thing about you. He says, uh, salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. So God's saying, have some flavor in yourself. Have some godliness in yourself. Because if you go with seasoning, your sacrifice is no good for God. Amen. So you got to keep yourself in line and in relationship. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pick up this other book right now and read as much as I can because Pastor Ben goes in a minute. You got you got four minutes. He always does. <laughs> so I want us to understand. Uh, someone asked me about they sent me this thing it had a lot of profanity on it and I was like hey man don't send me material if it got all this cursing and I don't want to hear that you know what I mean uh, I'm about to give up PG-13 movies because they're cursing too much I, don't, I just don't like hearing profanity man. and uh, he said oh, oh yeah I apologize you know but um, one of our friends when he when he when he passed Daniel says hey you know um, profanity is the language of hell. He said, really? He said, everybody's cursing and mad about something. You know, it's like as you're going through the tunnel, all you hear is this profanity, like people angry at each other, you know? So I heard it from him, but I heard it from someone else. They said, while I was there, everybody was cursing, cursing, and they were cursing God, or they were cursing about their situation. Profanity is, the, as he says, the language of hell. So two, two people who have had a, a death experience told me profanity is the language of hell. So I'm like, well, no wonder Satan wants us using profanity. No wonder all of our, our movies have profanity in it. Because he's trying to teach us how to talk like people talk in hell. And so for us to say, I don't want to curse anymore. These two boys that one is a comedian now, Christian comedian. He said him and his friend made an act when they were 12 not to curse anymore. And I was like, that's kind of cool, right? So God says this word. He says, let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. If you're a born again Christian, it's hard to curse. Because as soon as you do, you can say a, a word that's not even that bad, you think. And the Holy Spirit like, what? Yep, check you quick. So I'm letting you know, like there are things that God wants us to do and only we have the free will to come into obedience and do what he's asking us to do. Yeah. Satan is not trying to save you like, oh, well, I want you to be raptured because I don't want you to go through the, the tribulation. <laughs> Satan is like, I mean, God is like, I want to save you because if you die in this sin, you can't disappear. You're going to appear somewhere rather with me or in hell and in torment. And the, the, the book says that he gives them a body to exist there. So when the person is tormented and consumed, they regenerate. They're tormented, consumed, they regenerate. So I'm letting you know, look, this is bigger than the tribulation. We're trying to get people saved because we don't want them to go to hell. You understand? And right now, it's like seems like we talk about everything in the Bible, but the fact because God this morning, like I was like, "What you want me to, pre to preach about today?" You know, and the Lord's like, "I didn't come to save people from tribulations, so you can leave the rapture thing alone right now." I said, "I didn't come to save people from tribulation. I came to save people from hell." And they've forgotten about that. Mm -hmm. We're out witnessing the people because we don't want them to go, to, to go through tribulation. <laughs> there's people in hell, God told me, that would volunteer to be back on the earth, drinking a glass of water, going through tribulation. Mm -hmm. 
It's like they, the Lord said they'd even drink bad water because of where they're at. They understand what's worse. You understand? God did this. He came for a reason. There's a reason he paid so much for you. There's a reason he died on the cross. There's a reason why when they were trying to get him to, to come down off the cross, he wouldn't come down because he was there when he made hell. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, I'm not coming down because if I come down, they all got to go to the place yeah. that I made for the demons. And I don't want that to happen to them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this portion here. Praise God. Now, if you've accepted Christ, now, there's a parable that Jesus talks about. He says, a, a very wealthy man left his home and he went out to searching for something of value, right? And he says he found a pearl, right? And when he found that pearl, he said, I'm going to go back and sell everything I have and purchase this land so I can have this pearl, right? So the wealthy man went back and he sold everything. He purchased the land so that he could have the pearl. The pearl is you. Yeah. The wealthy man is God. So he gave, Jesus is saying, I gave up everything to come and purchase you. So you're valuable to God. Right, God loves righteous people. People that are like, hey man, you want to get high? No, I'm, I'm living for Jesus. Guy in the store was talking to me. He started cursing. I was like, man, I don't do that. I'm, I'm with Jesus now. I just, I love the Lord right now. I used to talk like you, but I don't. I just started talking to him about Jesus. He said, thank you, bro. I needed to hear that. And then I went back shopping like a dummy. I should have asked him if he wanted Jesus. But I'm just saying God loves righteous people. We're valuable to him. So here, I want to read this portion. It's from the book of, I, I, I believe, Esdras. And so it's from the Apocrypha. So I'm just going to read it to you because it maybe it'll hit home how God feels about you. Understand? Because you're valuable. OK, now it says, judge, therefore, which things are precious and desirable. Those that are of abundance or those that are rare, which is more valuable. Rare. rare. I said, sovereign Lord, what is plentiful is less worth. For what is more is for what is more rare is more precious. He answered me and said, weigh within yourselves what you have thought. For he who has what is hard to get rejoices more than he who has what is plentiful. Unrighteous people are plentiful. So also will be the judge which the judgment which i have promised for i will rejoice over the few who shall be saved because it is they who have made my my uh uh, uh glory and 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 prevailed and and pre who have made my name glorious and prevail now through them my name has now been honored I will not grieve over the multitudes of those who perish for it is for it is they who are now like a mist and are similar to a flame and smoke. They are set on fire, burn hotly and extinguished out. You understand? So God is interested in what people who want to serve him. Very valuable. What do we do with trash every week? Throw it out. We throw it out. You throw out things that aren't, aren't valuable. You save things that are valuable. A person with a body with no Holy Spirit in him is like having a car with no engine or tires. What are you going to do with that? You're going to junk it. But it's a Cadillac. It's a Cadillac with no engine and no tires. So you have to have something in you 
that's valuable to God that he wants to preserve. And what do you have in you? The Holy Spirit. And if you don't have that, <laughs> I'm going to try it. Let me just see if, I, if it's here. Oh, here it is right here. Because he says, the most high shall reveal upon them. Okay, this is, what, this is what it says. And the most high shall, shall be revealed upon the seat of judgment. He's talking about, because what happens when a person dies? He says, they go before God, and the most high appears on a seat of judgment. Okay? So this person, because everybody thinks, you know, uh, yeah, now we're talking about before Christ, okay? Or, well, whatever, whatever the, the situation he's saying here, because this is the angels talking. And he said, the most high shall, shall be revealed upon the seat of judgment. And compassion shall pass away, and patience shall be withdrawn. Now, the Hebrew words for that is rakam, mercy, shall be, shall be removed, and hen, grace, shall be taken away. So when you sit before God for judgment, mercy and grace disappear. Why? Because now you're only there for the case. And what's the case? You're either guilty or you're innocent. How will I know you're innocent? You have Christ within you. How will I know you're guilty? You never accepted Christ. You blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is in the world to do what? To teach you about God and how to be saved from hell. That's why the Holy Spirit is here. Okay? He's trying to teach you how to be saved. Amen. 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 Because when you get there, people say, well, you know, he's a merciful God. He's a merciful God now. Because you're living, you're walking, you're breathing, you're talking. He's a God of grace now. Yeah, because grace hasn't ended. But gr even grace comes to an end. Yes. No one can tell you that. Yep. But the scripture says when you sit before God, he said mercy and grace vanish. Because you can't be a good judge if you sit there and listen to every story of every evil person, of every lie. Because I know one thing about criminals. They lie. <laughs> yep. So I'm not listening. I know I know your 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 innocent or guilt by what you brought into the into the court. You either got Christ in you or you don't. What about your mercy and your grace? Oh, this is a this is court. Mercy and grace was the time I gave you to get it right before you got here. Did you pay the bill? That, that, that's, that was the, the, the judge asked me, right? Did you pay the ticket? Well, you know, uh, Mr. Judge, my job wouldn't give me the time off. Eh, you know, you're kicking your little foot like you're a little rascal. <laughs> and God is like, I just want to know, did you pay the bill or not? Well, um, on the way there, it's none of that. Mm -hmm. This is about the case. And so God is trying to save us from this. Luke chapter 16, right? Lazarus, right? Yeah. He gets there, Lazarus, the rich man says, I am in torment in these flames. This is Jesus telling the story, and he doesn't tell it as a parable. He says, there's a guy named Lazarus, and this is what happened to him. And there was a rich man that lived, and this is how he treated the poor man. He said, the poor man died, and he went into paradise, and the rich man died, and while in torment in hell, he said, what do you mean, while in torment? Yep. And flames. He said, I am tormented in these flames. Can you send Lazarus to give me some water to cool my tongue? Mm -hmm. Is Jesus lying? Nope. So there is a place called hell. And the balance of it is what? Getting a person to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. One. Getting that person to take their walk with Jesus Christ serious, too. You understand? Because if you accept Christ and you still want to live in sin, you're not. God, the scripture says God is not mocked. 
Okay? I want us to understand this. Because I think we think of, we talk about rapture and, and tribulation too much. And we don't understand this person has an eternity to live somewhere. And the balance is hanging in the fact that he doesn't know Christ. And you can, look, don't waste time. It was like, she had her sister on the phone. She's like, I heard her leading her sister to Christ. Her, her husband, she was leading her to Christ. I was like, yeah. Because that prayer, that's not a magic prayer. That's an incredible prayer yeah. that gets the Holy Spirit inside of a person. That's the beginning of eternal life. Yeah. So this is important. Now, if the person's not living good, strong for Christ, keep praying for them. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because this is a tough walk. Yeah. Yes. Keep praying for them. Like, drop them a, 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 a Jesus loves you every now and then. But understand what's in the balance. What's in the balance? Heaven or hell. Yeah. OK, not you and Mr. Rapture, heaven and hell is in the balance. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Good work. Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.